Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander. And I am Amy Fearman. And this week we are going to be talking with you about how you can get things done faster. We're going to talk about time management. Now don't run away by me saying the word time management. We're going to teach you how you can get things done faster in your business. So you're not spending all of your time doing the things that aren't making you money in your business. But this is actually a special edition of time management because we're specifically going to talk about bundles because whether you bundle or whether you don't, if you're bundling, you know the struggle is real. You know that there's a lot of different um, components that go into building bun bundles, no pun intended there, but the components of time and what you have to do with that. But everything takes time when it comes to business. We want to make sure that you're doing everything the most efficiently and fa to make it faster. Why? Because time is money. And speaking of time is money, that is our code word for this week. The code word is to get you into the Facebook group so that you can come discuss the things on the show, ask your business questions and, and just get some answers because we all need answers, right? We're not alone in this bundling. We're not alone in selling on Amazon. And we want to make sure that you know that you have a place to come to for trusted, honest answers. So mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word time is money because it actually is. And we're going to talk about that today. Time is 100% money. Now, before we dig into this, we're actually going to start this episode by asking you a couple of questions. And here's the first one. Do you know how long it takes to you for you to complete each step in bundle creation going through the framework? Just think about that for a second. Off the top of your head, do you actually know that? Have you actually even tracked that? That's something interesting. Do you know, do you know what you need to do each day to ensure that your business is running smoothly? Do you have a checklist of some sort? Do you have that? Oh, it's just all up in my head and I just kind of know what you're what I'm doing. Do you have that available to you? Chances are that your answer is either no or kind of sort of maybe. And how does kind of sort of maybe like if so, if you ask somebody a question that you really need an answer to, and they said, eh, sort of kind of maybe you're moving on to someone else. If you go to your doctor and you ask them about specific ailments or you've got on a medication and they go, well, kind of sort of maybe you're probably thinking what I need a yes or no here. Um, the reality is that we get caught up in the weeds in our business. We just so busy, like doing day to day and, you know, Oh, what I have to do today just to put out fires that we're not actually paying attention to the time and energy that goes into your business. And we got to tell you that this is something that like there's holes in your bucket. This is what I call that. The holes in your bucket. You have a bucket full of business and holes are draining out time or money and both because time is money, right? So if you're losing time, then you're also losing money. And we want to help you plug those holes so that you can do things more efficiently and faster so that you can make more money. I mean, we're in business to make money, right? That's the whole idea. And so we want to make sure that you're getting the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to both time and money. And I don't want those of you who are like, I am really, I'm not, I don't get distracted. I'm a disciplined person. I have a way that I do things. Well, guess what? Even even those of us who are disciplined get distracted and procrastinate. We just might procrastinate and do things differently. It's part of human nature. It's part of how we're built. It happens. Um, and we want to help you work through that. So don't tune out. Everybody, and I, mean, I do mean everybody, can use this information. We have an episode from earlier on, gosh, I don't have it in my head right now. I'll have to look it up and put it on the show notes, but the, the, we have an episode that talks specifically about distractions and about minimizing distractions and using time wisely in your business overall. But this specific episode today is more about bundling and bundling research and doing the things more faster and efficiently. What kind of time does it actually take to do bundles? I think it might surprise you, but I think that there's also some really practical solutions to help you put things in place to reduce and eliminate some of these time management issues because we all what happens is if things are hard or we don't know what to do we start doing random things you might be busy all day but what are you actually accomplishing because I know my go-to procrastination tends to be what most people would be like Ugh. like I like to do numbers and budgets so when I'm supposed to be doing this and I don't want to be doing this I end up doing budgets and numbers instead and then I'm like, oh, wait, that didn't get done. Why? I'm putting it off for some reason. There's a whole episode talking about why you put stuff off and how to prevent that. So that's not for this episode. But We, we all do that. 
we all do it in our businesses in any way. And they can be small ways and they can be big ways. But all of those, whether it's big or small, are taking pieces of time out of your business. And you think, oh, well, that doesn't matter. It's only a, little, a couple minutes here or there. Well, little minutes add up to big minutes and hours and days. So you have to be paying attention to all of the places where, whether it's the, it will go this way, that little slow drip in your faucet on your bathroom sink don't, well, just think, we'll get that fixed later. Do you know how many gallons a day that that can add up to? So every single little drip that comes out of your bucket adds up to big dollars of lost money because of time over and over again. So keep that in perspective. Yeah, like literally just write that down somewhere. Little little drips add up to gallons or, or little cents make dollars and dollars make, you know, the whole the world go round. So you have to really think about those things. What Tight, what takes the most time in bundling? Anyone? Anyone? Come on, you know the answer for this. We talk Research. about it all the time. <laughs> Research. And just a couple of weeks ago, we did an episode dedicated to research and how you can improve your research process so that you can work smarter, not harder, and work a little faster. So oftentimes we spend tons of time on research, but end up with nothing. So go back to episodes and listen to the research episode there about learning to do research more effectively, because this episode is way more about time. And so that's part, that's like part one. So go listen to that first. That's then- episode number 132. In case you want to go back and look at it on your podcast app, it's episode 132. Um, it talks all about research. So go back, listen to that after you're done listening to this one, if you're behind on the podcast. So what is the first thing that you can do to make your research more time effective? Follow the framework, like literally step by step, follow the framework. If you don't know what the framework is, it's the wholesale bundle framework. It's the 12 step framework that we use to create bundles every single time we create bundles. And it's the foundation of the wholesale bundle system. You can learn more about that by going to mommyincome.com slash system to learn all about that. But we're going to give a little bit of a dose of that here. Like the framework, we give you the step by step. You don't have to guess as to what step am I supposed to do next? Do I pick components to my bundle? Do I look at competition? Do I know what my keywords are? We give you the step by step process so that you don't have to second guess what you do next. Because the reality is like when you're following a step by step, it's like your GPS. Okay. And like, that's exactly what this is. It is a map for you to follow. If you're trying to get from A to Z, A to Z is your completed bundle. That means bundle invested in on the shelf, ready to sell on Amazon. From A, I have no bundles and I have no idea what I'm doing to bundle on the shelf. We give you this roadmap. Now, if you have never been someplace and you put the destination in your GPS, it gives you this beautiful, you know, um, step-by-step framework. The only thing that we can't do for you is go recalculating when you take a wrong turn or you get distracted. So today is your recalculating. Actually, we can in a way because what we see our students do and we see this happen in the workshops and we can redirect them in that moment is when we walk up to a table and somebody's on step six of the framework, but there's no list of keywords in front of them. We're like, what step are you on and why don't you have any keywords? We get to redirect them back to the stage of the framework that they skipped over, decided not to do fully. That's why having a framework, you can get distracted. You can get interrupted by your kid coming to ask you to sign a permission slip, whatever, and come back and be like, where was I? Oh, right. I was on step five of the framework. Now I can continue moving forward without all of the distractions eating away on your time, trying to recalculate yourself back to where you were. You've got the framework to follow, whether you went off this direction or somebody distracted you, you have the way to come back to where you were in the framework. And see, that's the thing is if you do get distracted, you know, maybe follow, you know, writing down, okay, step one, this, check it off. Step two, check it off. Step three. Okay. Where am I at? So even if you have to come back and go back to it, you'll know exactly where you are. We set this up for a reason to do this. And it's not just to be like, Hey, it's for us to be honest. Like this is the framework we created because we were all over the place and we weren't necessarily following. We didn't realize we were following our own process. And so that's what we needed because the distractions are real and the rabbit trails are real and research is not always easy. And so this makes it flow in a way that you can do that. So following the framework will help you be more time efficient. Another way to do that 
is to also track how long it takes you to do certain things. There's no race here. There's no race, you know, not racing to the bottom here. No one's comparing any numbers. It's for you to see how long it takes you because this is about realistic expectations. People ask us all the time, okay, you guys do this full time, but then you, you know, you actually say you only work, you know, two days a week on your business. Well, actually that's true because we have refined the process so much that when we have bundle creation days, we sit down and do bundle creation days. And then the other day is for ordering, processing and send it to prep center. It's really not complicated, but we have a lot of practice. So, and that's a piece of it that I want to cover is practice doesn't make you perfect. Practice makes you better. You can't get better at doing anything unless you actually put time into doing it. So using the framework, going through the framework and following those steps each and every time there, there are two parts that each and every time you do it, you will become more efficient because you won't have to think what's the next step in the framework. What am I going to do? Chris and I don't think about the steps in the framework. We'll, we'll go back to be like, what, why is this not working? Oh, I'm kind of glazed over that one. We'll go back and do that. There's that piece of it. Um, there's also the trying to think of words around it. There's the, I just totally lost my train of thought. Keep rolling. Cause I lost my train of thought. <laughs> So it, it, within this process, you know, that, that's the thing is that that happens too. Just like Amy just lost her train of thought. So what? We lose our train of thought when it comes to this because we're distracted by something. So there's ways, again, we're not going to go over that whole episode we did about distractions. There's tons of ways to help you prevent when you sit down to focus. But even when you sit down to focus and you put your phone in another room and you're locked your office so no one can bother you and you've shut off Facebook and you've done everything else that you need to do you still need to know what you're doing for a second and third and what you want your end result to be. And so while you're doing your research, track how long that takes you. Track undistracted time. Because I think it might surprise you of how fast you can do it if you're not bouncing around all over the place. Now, for my 15 minute hustlers, I know you guys uh, you know, might only have 15 minutes to start and stop the process. That is totally fine too. Make notes of where you are. Put a sticky note on your computer screen when you walk away and say, start with framework step five. And that means you know when you come back, you're on step five. Just write yourself a little note, but track how long it takes you to do things because you'll be surprised at your own progress. Try to beat your own time. Say last time step five took me, um, you know, two hours. This time oh, I, I know what I was going to say. Okay. Yay. It's, I knew it it, it's also about the more you do it, the better you get at it. But being in a niche where you understand it and the more you stay in that same vein, the better you get at doing it in that niche because you've already done some of the front end work. You already know part of the framework because you've done the work before. So you're not always having to start with square one. You may be two or three steps in because you have a foundation to start from. So one other talking about what we talked about two weeks ago in episode 132 about having that foundation of knowledge, utilizing that knowledge bank to start a different part of the framework because you've already built some foundation in that space. So with the realistic expectations of time, you want to try to track that the next time you do the whole framework process and see how long it actually takes you. And then when you come to the end and you've got your bundle and you're doing this, now another time suck in another place where you can create processes and have things for, for putting all your duckies in a row is the ordering process. So okay. now done all this research and now what? Ordering process is simply... It doesn't have to be complicated. It's simply how I go from I'm ordering product to being received. Like, what does that look like? What are the steps that you take? The reason you want a system in place is so you can repeat it every single time you order. So you're not having to figure it out every single time, because what takes time is the figuring out what the heck I'm supposed to do. And once you have that in place, and this is something that um, like in the hub a, a couple of months ago, we had Melina Palmer on and she's from the brainy business. Hi, Melina. We love you. Um, and she is so brilliant about how the brain works and how people process information and how they make purchases and how they make sales. But one of the things she said that makes people most efficient because your brain wants to do things subconsciously because you know, but we also subconsciously skip steps because we are a little bit egotistical naturally. And we think I got this. I know what I'm doing until you don't until you skip something and you go, dang it, I can't believe I forgot that. It's okay, why do you think this is us, right? We're not perfect, we're forgetful, and we're subconscious thinking that we got all of our stuff together as well. This is why we keep the framework on the desk because I'm prone to skip steps. 
I'm honest. I'm prone to skip steps. What happens is once you make a, a step-by-step process for something, including ordering in your ordering process, number one, you can just check that off. You can have that and you can say, okay, this is what I do first, second, third, fourth. And yes, eventually it will come second nature, but then you can use that to hire someone else to do the process. Then you're, it's done. It's amazing. It's amazing to have that. But even before you get to that place, having a step-by-step to follow, it prevents a lot of time sucks. How many of you have, whether it's single item or bundle, forgotten to order something that was selling out? Or you have a bundle, you're missing this component. And oh no, now I have to wait another three more weeks before I can send that bundle in because I forgot to order that component. That's a dollar bill every single day that you don't have stock that to sell on Amazon. It's dollar bills that you can't spend on other things because you have inventory sitting at the warehouse that, or at your house that can't move because it doesn't have this fourth component to it. So really understanding the importance of this, we're saving you time, but we're also saving you dollars from making mistakes that can impact that, whether it's forgetting to order things, whether it's misordering things, ordering too much of something, all of those come into the ordering process and understanding these are what I'm going to order. We teach about trends in the, the, the Amazon Files Hub where you can track what you need to order, but that's only part of it. The process is, okay, I know what I need to order. Who do I, what do I need to order from what vendors? We're talking about placing orders. So let's talk about first before we, like as we're placing orders, are you placing using purchase orders? Are you using websites? Different, manu- different manufacturing distributors have different ways to order. Yeah, they, you can either send a PO, a purchase order to a rep. You know, sometimes they prefer that because it also, I find that it goes faster. When I'm dealing with a human and instead of a technology or piece of equipment or a website, I feel like my orders go through faster when I have, you know, communication with the vendor. And but they might require you to use a website and, you know, that's just part of the process. So do you know what vendor requires what? Or do you have to think about that every single time you go to reorder? Oh, I actually created a cheat sheet for myself for each vendor. It gives me all of the vendor information as far as lead times and contact information and where they need to place the orders. I actually did this when I hired somebody to help me with my ordering because I was like, I know all this in my brain, but she didn't. And so I had to give her the tool to be able to be successful to place orders without having to ask me 8 million questions because I had it in my head. Another part of the ordering process is how to track the financial transactions. So you've, okay, you've placed an order and on your PO, it says that you're placing an order for a thousand dollars, but then you send the order in and they come back to you and say, well, you know, item A is on back order. And so they're only going to ship you a $912 worth of stuff. And this other thing that's on back order has not been charged. How do you track those transactions? How do you cross check invoices with products received so that everything balances out? Do you have a process for this? If you don't figure out when you, when I say figure out, I mean, every little minute detail, if you don't think you have a process next time you sit down to do this, write down every step that you just took. Okay. I, I opened this and I did this. I opened this paper folder over here that I have from vendor a, and I did X, Y, Z. Whatever that is, create that and you will start to find the kinks in the chain as soon as you realize, like when I start doing this, I'm like, oh, I forgot this step. I didn't do this. What happens with this? And you creating your process as you're going along because you know the mistakes that are being made. If you don't think you have a process, contact me. I'm serious. I will sit down with you for 15 minutes and show you where your process is. Ask Kristen. We've done this many times in her business. Like to be able to say, I don't, she'll, she'll tell me, I have a process. I'm like, uh-huh, I've watched you do it. She goes, no, I don't. I'm like, yeah, you do. And sometimes we don't know our own processes because it just comes naturally. It's what we do all of the time. So we think I can't teach somebody how to do this because it's all stuck up here. But guess what? All of that that's going around in your head can be something you can step-by-step do. If you're taking steps, we all take steps. It's how we get from A to Z, whether we realize it or not, we have that ability. So wanting to help you see each and everything. If we go from anything from tracking financial transactions, talking about once that inventory is received, whether you receive it in your house or a prep center receives it for you. So for me, making sure that I know that this ship because when most of my vendors, when I get an invoice in my inbox, that means they ship the product, right? Then I'm going to be like, okay, they're coming from New York state to Michigan. That's about three days. Let's pay attention and making sure, because then I can check the tracking numbers provided by my manufacturer. Did the prep center get it? 
if they haven't checked it in, I can touch base with them saying, this got received on this day, please make sure that it gets checked in. So when you have all these things, you might not, again, Amy was saying that, you might not think that you have a process. And I also hear you, I'm busy, I don't have time, I'm already overwhelmed with everything I'm doing. I've got my nine to five and I'm doing this on the side and I'm trying to make it work and I don't have time to sit down and think about processes. Actually you do, because if you don't, it's those holes in the bucket and the leaky holes eventually cause bigger problems. Have you ever had an oil leak in your car? And it, it starts with a tiny drip, right? And you see it on your garage floor and you're like, hmm, I wonder what that is. Maybe it's just water. Turns out there's a bigger spot and then a bigger spot. It, the problem just keeps getting bigger the, the more you ignore it. Hello, taxes. Hello, bookkeeping. <laughs> hello. These things cause big problems when you don't take care of them on a regular basis. And guess what? It does not have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be 14 steps. Sometimes your steps might just be three processes, three things that you do, but simplify it. If you find that you're stepping on your own toes over and over and doing this and going backtracking, then find out where the, the holes are and plug them up. Say, okay, I don't need to do this because this is twice. Like, how am I double checking? Because if you don't have an answer for that right away, you haven't spent much time thinking about this and you don't realize that you're losing money for every hour you're spending backtracking. The, the question that always comes to mind is, can I afford not to do this? And so looking at it from, is it going to take me a half an hour of my time to sit down and figure out what this process is? And the other part of that is most of us think that's going to take me too long. I don't want to do it. There have been so many things in the past 12 months that I've just bitten the bullet and eaten the frog and gone, well, why did I, why did I put that off for so long? It didn't take that darn long to do the darn thing, right? I was able to get it done in 15 minutes or half an hour when I thought it was going to take me two days. I think we procrastinate on stuff because I mean, I do, because I think it's going to take more time than it does. That's the yeah. reality. And it's just like, I've never done this before. I think it's going to take forever. And the first time, guess what? It might, but a stitch in time saves nine. That is like an old school saying, and what that really means is if you do the work up front, you don't have to go back and fix it 10 more times. It's like you don't put duct tape on a window, like it's a temporary fix, right? You don't put a Band-Aid on cancer. Like you have to actually go to do the work the first time, finish it up, fix it so that it doesn't come back, so it doesn't become a bigger problem. And so that's what we're saying. If you had to handwrite, so I want you, everyone to just stop for a second and think about this. If you had to write a manual for what you do, what would this part of the process look like? Because I answered that question for myself while I was doing this. Cause like Amy tells me, like I'm using her advice, right? Um, is like, you, you don't think you have a process, but you do. And then, so all you need is these questions. So like, what do you do first? Well, when you place an order, what do you do? So this is like my sample order process. I'm going to read you these steps. I know it's kind of hard to listen to and it's, without seeing it. So maybe we can post it somewhere either in the notes or something like that, but just, this is what it looks like. So step one, place orders using PO template from vendor folder A. So vendor folder, number one, I have Google folders for every vendor I have. And in there are my trends and my, my template POs that I need to send to them and all the things that are already organized. So that's step one, even if you don't have that. But since I have that set up, I go, I place the orders. I print the PO with the send date and I hang it on my bulletin board over here. And I write the ETA, the estimated time of arrival in pink on my PO. Yes, I do this every single time. Here is my lovely pink marker that I use. And so I know the ETA is over there. And then my assistant puts that on the sheet and I still track the stuff paper wise, but he's putting it on the prep center sheet. When the item comes in is checked in, you check the invoices for any back orders or discrepancies. Then step four is checking items upon arrival and cross check for accuracy. So the prep center does that, but before they did, guess who did that? Us at our house, we received inventory. We're like, okay, we're missing something or we had extra or whatever it is. Step five, Take the PO and file invoice as complete to the vendor in vendor folder A or keep it on the bulletin board until back orders arrive. So that was either A or B. It's either complete and I can file it away or the back orders are coming and then I change the ETA. Step 5A is to reach out to the vendors about back orders and discrepancies. So that is actually the process I use when the stuff comes in and we have to cross check that. But I did it automatically, so I didn't know I had a process until Amy was like, yeah, you take steps, you just do it naturally and, and you don't think about it. So that is a process. Think about what that is for you if you had to write it down for someone else. It's 
all you have to do is sit down and even if it's not a separate time, but the next time you sit down to place orders or do a step process in your business is to have a piece of paper, you know, small, little five by seven yellow pad that I always have next to me. You can have that next to you. And as you do each step, take a notice to what it was. This is what I did now. Write it down. You're not having to take additional time outside of doing it. It's actually easier to do it when you're walking through the process already because you're not going to miss steps because you're in the flow and process there. If you do it outside of the time when you're doing it, you can, but sometimes you'll miss steps because you're not actively doing that step-by-step -step process. And you'll find, one of the things that's great about doing this, you'll find holes. You'll find places where it takes you time that it shouldn't take you. One of the things that I always did is when I was doing my filing of all of my sales taxes, I had ones that were every month. I could do those because I did them every month. But the ones that I had to file annually, I was like, I don't remember from January to January, year to year, what am I supposed to do to file my sales tax in the state of Pennsylvania? I had to create a three-step process to remind myself of the things I needed to do because I found myself trying to figure it out every single year. I'm like, this is silly. I shouldn't be spending all this time what can I do? This is where the time saving comes in. You put the time in up front while you're going through this process. And on the back side, you do it faster every single time because you've got this checklist to follow. You're not stumbling through it going, what am I supposed to do next? And having to think about it or having to find that document that you need that you created. You have all of that so that you can easily check these off. And when it becomes easy for you to go through that process, it becomes something you can teach to somebody else. That, whether you use it for yourself or you teach it to someone else, it's so important. So you guys all know me and my numbers and I like to do my accounting and I do it on the, the second Friday of every month regardless. Like that's just the day I do accounting. And I do have a process for the accounting and I actually ended up writing it down because what happens was I was going back to enter it into the spreadsheet and then I realized, oh, I forgot to calculate the fees because that's not something that's always front and center. I have to pull those fees from different places and like figure out which fees are which and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I have one fee column, but I have to pull fees from four different places in order to put them in the fee column that my tax preparer wants so that when I do that for my accountant, when I give them the year end spreadsheet, they don't care which fees are which, it's just fees. That's the tax, you know, preparation or whatever. She's like, I don't need 14 different fees and what they're for. You give me a bottom line fee. So I have to collect those from different places, Amazon fee here and bank fee here. Fee is a fee. They don't care where it comes from. So the reality there is that like I had to pull those from different places and I was skipping steps and forgetting stuff until I went to enter because like, oh, I forgot the PayPal fees or I forgot this fee. And so I created the process. It's literally still on a sticky note. But when I pull the accounting folder out, I have two sticky notes, one for my Amazon business and one for mommy income business. And I go through the different processes for the different things and enter the places they go. And since I created that process for me, now my assistant can start doing that because I, I did the process two or three times. I found the holes and now I just took that off my plate. So I don't do that anymore. I give it to someone else. And what's amazing is when you hire somebody to do some of these, they will find additional holes that you didn't find because when you are this close to something, you don't always see the problems that are there. And they will say, if we did it this way, this would be easier. I was like, I never thought of it that way. Yes. Awesome. Chris and I do that for each other sometimes too. It's like, you're doing it this way. Have you thought about doing it this way? And it's just having that different perspective helps you. And that might be you having somebody else do it for you or just having that conversation with somebody else to say, this is how I'm doing this. Does this make sense? Well, and not only that, but if you actually write down your step-by-step, -step, even if it's like four different steps, write it down as if no one's ever done it before. Amy did this for me once on a process she was doing. And she said, basically find the holes. And I had never seen this process before. I had, it was like literally Greek to me. And I'm like going through it and I'm like, okay, I followed all of her steps. And then I got stuck somewhere. And I said, I can't do this because I don't have this, this, and this that they're asking. She's like, oh, I forgot that step because it was in her head. It was just automatic. So if you write down your process, and Ryan, I know this is not like the sexiest episode in the world, but guys, time is money. If you don't have a process you can follow that you can hand off to your husband, your spouse, your partner, your someone else and say, look, can you just go through this once? Can you spend 15 minutes going through this to see if it makes sense to you? If you can follow the steps, if it's 
that easy for them to do and just say, okay, I, I, I got stuck here because I didn't know where to go or what to do. Then you know that there's a hole, there's a kink in the chain or you know, you're missing some stuff. So making sure that you have that for your ordering process, writing that stuff down for your accounting, for your bookkeeping, be consistent because consistency and routine and processes make business faster. Why do you think franchises of like McDonald's, for example, like they have a user manual, they have an employee guidebook called standard people. operating procedures in most yes. corporations. I'm not corporate at all, but it's, Neither am I. Yeah. it's how do we do what we do and when and what order? Because that's how it's a well-oiled machine. That's why big businesses and corporations have these things, not just for legal reasons, because streamlining makes the bottom line bigger. It's just that simple. All right. So now taking the same idea of filling the holes in your bucket, we're going to take this to listing creation. This can also be a time suck. This is something that Kristen's actually worked with me on because I used to take days to write listings. She's like, why is it taking you so long? And so we would talk through that. Now we've put together an entire module process that we follow in module three of the wholesale bundle system that talks specifically about how we do this because we, I, I would be the person, I'll throw myself under the bus, is I would do all the research for a bundle and then I would forget where I put it and then I'd go to create the listing and guess what I'd have to do? Redo all of the research to find the keywords to put in the listing because I didn't have that information saved for me. And it came to a point where I realized, well, I'm doing this work twice. This is totally sucking money out of my business because I don't need to do this twice. I need to do it once and then know where that information is. And that's one of the reasons why in the wholesale bundle system in the module three, we actually have a template and suggested process because when you start the framework, you're not thinking about your listing creation at the time, but you should print that out and start writing all your keywords on that or, or do it on a Google doc or do it on your iPad or do it whatever you have so that when you come back, because guess what happens? Lead times. You come to the end, you order a bundle, you placed your orders, you've done that process. But then when your bundle comes in and you have to you know, take pictures or you have images from your vendors or whatever else, and you go to create that listing, you're going to need to access all that. Otherwise, Guess what? Back to the drawing board, like what Amy was saying. So having that available, having it saved in either a document or a template or have a notebook, like you guys still, I, I am way, way better at Google Docs than I used to be, but this is still how I roll. Okay. I have tabs. I have sticky notes. I have things. I have two different notebooks for two different things because I still like to write stuff and I like to have my memory works better when I write things, especially in color. I've just learned that about myself. So even if I have documents, I still know. I know where that was. That was written in orange and that's under this tab because- I And she does. That. When we're in meetings, sometimes she'd be like, I wrote that down. It's in pink. Hold on. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, she's got process. And I will tell you what, I, I love so you dearly, my friend. But there were times when we first started working together when I first met her, she could not find things. And now there are processes. They're not the processes that I use, but they're the processes that work for her. And so we can share the processes that we use in the course and they may or may not work the way you need them to, but we give you a foundation to start from that you can tweak for what works in your business. We work with a prep center. You might not, you may have to do some of this stuff in internally, which means you need the process that works for you. So don't, uh, this is one of the things I see people doing is that doesn't work for me. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to do anything instead of, okay, this doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Let's put something in place that will work for me. We want to help you save the time. So let's talk specifically about listing things, things that you can do when you sit down to create a listing. You want to have those keywords. You want to have your photos ready. You want to have all that information. So when you go to put it into Google, into Amazon seller central to write your listing, it's all there. And you don't have to go back and find parts and pieces of it. You should not be doing keyword research when you're doing your listing. No. That's, that's when you sit down to do your listing, it should be A, B, C, D, fill in the gaps, fill in the blanks, fill in the data and create the listing. You do all the other stuff in the bundle research process and you write it all down or you document it all in a document or whatever it is that you do create it. If you don't have one, we have suggestions in, in the, course so in, in as a template. If, they, if you don't have any rhyme or reason right now, start with that and then figure out whatever works for you. Because when you sit down to do a listing, have you ever been timed out? And then all of a sudden- I hate when that happens. Circle of death. And then you have to like literally exit your browser and come back in. And then all of your data has been erased. Well, if you manually entered that and it's not saved anywhere, 
you're going to have to start over. Starting over takes time. Time is money. So every time you have to start a process over or you're starting over or you've made mistakes, it's going to cost you. And so you can prevent that by planning a little bit of ahead. And this is coming from a self-proclaimed non-planner. Okay. I've had to learn the hard way too many times. And I'm done learning the hard way. I like my profit. Thank you very much. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time creating listings. So I do it ahead of time so that when it's time to create that listing, I sit down. Someone asked me recently, how long does it take you to create a listing? I said, 20 minutes. And they're like, 20 minutes? You can write a listing? And yes, yes, I can. Why? Because I did 90% of the work when I did my research. And that is what you have to remember is creating a listing is just that putting the information into the template that Amazon gives you and making it active. All that other part is part of the research process and utilizing and having a plan. As we talked about earlier in this episode of how you do your research process, how you track all of that information. So you're not going through 45 different sheets of paper going, which one of these was about this particular bundle, having a process, having a document, having a template that you follow so that you know this is where the information is. I can go here, grab that, create listing. I got really good at using Google Drive to be able to have all that information. I write all that out as I'm creating the listing. I get all those keywords before I go to the listing while I'm doing the research. All that information gets put in there so I can just go plop it in here. And then I don't have to worry about the spinning wheel of death because Google saved me. Exactly. And I've had that happen too many times and get frustrated too many times. And I'm like, never again. I'm not ever going to get timed out by Amazon. I get logged out and log back in and lose all my information. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, that could be saved in drafts and they automatically save it. No, they don't yet. Sometimes they do. And that's great. But most of the time they don't. Sometimes it's just a login, log out error, whatever it is. It's still time is money. And I don't want to write listings twice, even if it takes me 20 minutes, because now that's 40 minutes. What could you be doing with 20 minutes if you had free time? Like, not creating a listing that I just already wrote and then lost all my info. So these are things in business that if you're newer to entrepreneurship or you're newer to business or you're just not used to it, it's okay. It's okay. We're not beating you up. We're actually just trying to give you solutions so that you can do this a lot easier and faster because it doesn't always come natural to all of us to have processes and things that we follow step by step, but eventually it just makes you more efficient. So just like get on board. And the sooner you bring processes into your business, the sooner you'll start filling the holes in those bucket or those holes in your bucket won't get so big that the whole bottom of your bucket falls out, right? So looking at it from what's easier to implement things when you're smaller than when you're at a larger scale. So being able to say, okay, what is my process? Now, once you have a process that can change and evolve with you. What gets you, what got you here won't get you there. Sometimes you need to shift and adjust those processes as you grow. But if you have a project, a process to shift and adjust, you're one step ahead of most of other sellers who aren't taking the time to put those processes in place when they're starting out or when they're six years in. And you know, when it comes to, we just had someone in the hub talk about this recently about how she um, made a mistake, which we all make mistakes, costly ones. Sometimes, sometimes it costs us a lot of money. And it's kind of what I call it. Like Dave Ramsey calls it the stupid tax, right? Like we all make these mistakes, like a ticket, like a speeding ticket is considered your stupid tax. Like you broke the rules, you got caught. Now you have to pay a hundred dollars speeding ticket. That sucks for all of us. But like what we learn, like slow down. Okay. Same thing in bundle creation. Bundle creation is the struggle is real. You've got four things coming from four different vendors maybe. And then you have to process all that. And like, it's really easy to forget a component in a bundle because you think, Oh, I've got this. It's fine. But if you don't have a checklist or something, or even an image of that, like sitting out, you could easily forget something and then guess what happens? You send it all to Amazon, realize you forgot something and now you're paying to ship that all back. Now you're losing money because it's not for sale and like all this stuff. It's an expensive mistake. And so this person went through that and now she created her own process now so that that doesn't happen again because that hurts. But if you're losing 500 bucks, like I don't care how rich you are, 500 bucks is 500 bucks. And mm -hmm. I don't want to lose that ever. I don't even want to lose 20 bucks. So when I look at some of those things, I think I don't want to lose money. So what can we do ahead of time to make sure all the duckies are in a row, even for ourselves, even if we're not hiring it out, because we'll make mistakes too. We get a little complacent. We get a little, we are like, human. I got this. And then you realize $500 later that you don't. Yeah, let's talk about this in this time management, filling bucket holes in managing inventory. Do you know how much inventory you buy during each pay period, those two weeks between when you get your disbursements. And what does that look like? Do you know what's selling when? 
This is one of the buckets, bucket holes that Krista and I had to fill a couple of years ago. It's why trends were created originally was because we were losing dollars because we weren't reordering and we were having periods of time where items weren't available for sale because we hadn't ordered them in the amount of time we needed to. So we were losing money because we weren't restocking in time. So we had to, you know, you can say, oh, I'm just going to go through all of my things every single time. Well, when you went back then, I was doing a mix of bundles and RA and I had 400 some odd things in my thing. Going through 400 things was a lot to go through. It's a lot easier when you have less, but still being able to go there. So when you're managing your inventory, this is the biggest money suck that you're going to have experience. Out of stock means out of money, out of sales, no more profit in your pocket. You can prevent, as, as long as it's not a back order issue from your vendor, there's no excuse for that. Like if you're out of stock on something, you, you know, it's okay if you're out of money and you couldn't replenish it because you couldn't, you know, put the money back in. The reality is if you have something that's selling on a regular basis, there's no reason why it should be out of stock. You should learn the lead times, learn how long it takes to get from your vendor to you and from you to Amazon and available for sale. Calculate that ahead of time and do that. There's processes for this. It's like, okay, knowing your 30 day sell through rate, track it. That's what we do in trends. We have a whole uh, spreadsheet in, in the hub about trends training because that's what we had to do to create it because we're plugging the holes. So I know what's selling every seven days, how much that's selling in seven days and what's going through my store on a regular basis. And I also can see what's not doing so well and what I might want to discontinue or listings that are red flags. So if I see in my trends report, zero, 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 three weeks in a row with no sales, a big red flag for me. This is not selling. Something's wrong with the listing. The picture's wrong. The keywords are wrong. There's more competition. There's ways to troubleshoot listings to make sure that you can get them for sale. Could be just Amazon's stupid algorithm that's not working for you right now. Whatever. The reality is there's ways to troubleshoot that. How do you know, especially the bigger your business gets? We have 200 live SKUs on a regular basis plus ins and outs of seasonal stuff. Like that's hard for one person to track or even three people on our team to track. So we have a system in place so that it's repetitive. And every week we can look what's been selling, what's not selling, what needs to be reordered, what needs to be discontinued, what is slow sales and listings need to be fixed. Those are like our four things that every single week are done because money is lost if you're not paying attention to your best sellers and you're not restocking them or money is lost. You're paying storage fees for stuff that hasn't been selling in 30 to 60 days. So paying attention to that. Do you have a process to track those things? Process, process, process. And no, it's not a sexy word. I know that it's one of those things like, I don't want to do that, but your business and your profit margin, your bottom line are going to thank you when you spend this time up front and all of a sudden you'll see, you'll reap the benefits of each time you implement this. Will it be tomorrow? No, but two weeks, Four weeks from now, when you get that next disbursement, you're going to start seeing changes when you implement these changes in your business. It's going to affect your bottom line in a, a positive way. way. Started, a great way to get started on this, like if you're like, oh my gosh, Kristen Amy, I'm not like you. I'm overwhelmed and I don't have a process for this and I don't have a spreadsheet. I don't even like spreadsheets. I did not use spreadsheets until I really started working with Amy because I didn't, number one, I didn't really know how. I didn't really use them well. I didn't know how. And they were like, okay, we got this. We can do this. And it's just a matter of sharing information, whether it's for your own internal self or somewhere else. But now I learned the process. I didn't learn it overnight. I, I even Google Docs. I learned to put my notes into Google Docs so that I have it forever in case paper gets lost or I can't remember where it is. And then you can search more by keywords. I can't type in a keyword into my notebook and have it prop up on the right page. But you can do that for Google Docs. So I've been learning to transfer that. Sometimes my notes are just my own and it's fine. And it helps me remember stuff. But um, the reality is 15 minute hustle. Put it on your calendar. Put it on your to-do list of saying, okay, for 15 minutes today, I'm going to write down my process for ordering. Or I'm going to write down and research my top three best-selling products in my Amazon store and just write it down. You can put it on a sticky note. You can sort that in Amazon reports of what's been selling the most, or especially if you have inventory lab, it's really easy to sort by ASIN profitability and this like it puts all the top ones right at the top. I mean, inventory lab, don't get me started. I mean, they, they literally save my butt on taxes and everything else because it, they make the user interface so easy to just sort by profitability of ASIN. And it just gives you this list from top to bottom of what you're making the most money on and what you're losing money on sometimes. And that's a great way to find holes in your bucket too, because then it'll show you this money, actually this 
bundle actually negative three dollars and you're like oh, what happened and that's an easy way to be able to fix right something. and i remember kristen told me a story where she's like i found a bundle that i was losing three dollars on because somewhere along the line amazon had tweaked the fees and it went from being this to this and all of a sudden now I'm losing three dollars in a bundle and I'm selling it consistently and if you're if it's a good seller you don't necessarily realize that you're not making any money on it unless you're paying attention to those things and so even having a process to make sure you're checking your reports every month each and every part piece of these is important for your business now we've talked about a lot of different things that you can do we have inside the hub we have a master list of tasks that you can do that include some of these that are processes that you can put in place like here's a list of the things you can do and then for each one of those you can put a process in place for we are here to help you one of the processes that we created we put together an entire training it's our trends reporting how we track and figure out what we need to buy each cycle and so we have put that together. It's in the hub, mommyincome.com slash hub. You can learn more about the hub there. It is being able to have processes in place or a starting block for processes for your business. You're going to fill those holes. The bigger you get, the bigger those holes get more quickly because it amplifies itself. Um, the more money you're spending, the mistakes can be bigger. Um, so wanting to make sure that you are putting processes in place to prevent those holes from growing. And it's one of those things that like, if you don't do it now, it, the, the small you thing, I'm small potatoes. I only have one bundle. I don't need a process for this. I already know what I'm doing. Okay. If your plan is to grow and have a long-term sustainable business, this is what long-term sustainable businesses do. They, they have processes because eventually you're not going to do it all yourself and you're going to have to hire somebody. And either then when the rubber meets the road, you're starting to, to create processes. Hello, that was me. Um, I'm starting to do it more ahead of time now. Even the things I think about, you have a process for your laundry. You have a process for, you know, all the different things, even cooking. It's a recipe. A recipe is a process. I mean, we follow processes all the time. We use this sexy word process, whatever it is. It's a recipe. That's sexier, right? But what's your recipe for inventory management? <laughs> whatever you, however you want to sexify Chris that. is always thinking about food, just saying. Uh, you know, the struggle is real. <laughs> like, feed me. You know, that's how you get, that's how you get some of my time is you're like, hey, can I buy you lunch? I'm like, you had me at tacos, okay? Um, so yeah, if you're feeding me tacos, like, yeah, we're going to have a conversation. Uh, the reality is that you need these things in starting the process. When we talk about trends, that's basically our inventory management system. And so it's not complicated. It's not, um, you know, we're, we're not on the level of like Steve Jobs and stuff. We're not doing these things, but it's like a simplified way for us to use inventory management so that we know how much we're making, how much we need to spend, how much we need to reorder. People ask us these questions all the time. And so we just basically gave our process away because we want people to be successful and not be in the weeds and not making money. So follow a process. Um, that is mommyincome.com slash hub to get those trainings. And we, what well, next week we are having a guest on the show who has kind of, um, she's amazing and she is a mastered, well, she wouldn't say mastered because you know, we're all humble and shy sometimes. And, um, time management because when you have little kids at home if you're doing something like that or you're doing a side hustle time management is so much more important and the struggle is real you don't always have it all figured out and you've got to come listen to her story because she doesn't even call it a success story she's just like this is just what i do and this is what i've learned to figure out and it's not all sunshines and rainbows it's not all um profit and you know we're making it rain and throwing hundreds everywhere like sometimes it's difficult but once you figure out a process um, it really saves you time. And then you can get back to real life because guess what? We're helping you build businesses and that's great. But the reason we build businesses is so we can make um, better financial, you know, up our financial status so that we can live a life that we love so that we can leave business, do it faster so that we can get to real life. I mean, Amy loves rock climbing. She doesn't want to do business all day. Like she likes to do stuff. I like to do stuff. I like painting and singing and dancing and going to concerts and football games. Like I don't want to do business 24 seven every single day. And so processes are in place so we can save time to do stuff we really love doing. That's why we're here. So that's what you have to look forward to. And you think I'm saving this time in my business so that I can have more fun in my real life. And so that's why we're here. So next week, come and listen to Ryan's story. She's going to be talking about these things and how she's made processes and time work for herself. And you want to stay tuned for those episodes. So make sure you subscribe so that you can be notified when our next episode airs. We will see you at the same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Mm -hmm.